Multiple sclerosis, or MS, is an autoimmune disorder of the central nervous system, or CNS. It is characterized by inflammation, demyelination, and axonal loss. MS lesions are believed to occur when activated immune cells cross the blood-brain barrier into the CNS. Leukocytes such as T cells are immune cells involved in MS pathogenesis. In MS, T cells become activated in the periphery and migrate across the blood-brain barrier. Once inside the CNS, T cells can release cytokines and recruit other immune cells to create an inflammatory environment that is thought to lead to the destruction of myelin and axonal damage. Tysabri, or natalizumab, indicated for the treatment of patients with relapsing forms of MS is a monoclonal antibody that targets the alpha-4 subunit of alpha-4 beta-1 integrins. Expressed on the surfaces of all leukocytes except neutrophils, alpha-4 integrins bind to receptors on vascular endothelial cells, such as vascular cell adhesion molecule 1 or VCAM1. This interaction may facilitate the endothelial adhesion of leukocytes, such as T cells, and their migration across the blood-brain barrier. One of the ways in which Tysabri may exert its effect is by binding to the alpha-4 subunit of the alpha-4 beta-1 integrin on all leukocytes except neutrophils, and blocking its interaction with adhesion molecules, including VCAM1, on the vascular endothelium. This may prevent the migration of leukocytes across the blood-brain barrier, inhibiting further recruitment and inflammatory activity of activated immune cells. In vitro, Tysabri may also suppress ongoing inflammation by inhibiting interactions between alpha-4 integrins on leukocytes and ligands such as osteopontin and an alternatively spliced domain of fibronectin connecting segment 1, CS1. In vivo, Tysabri may further act to inhibit the interaction of alpha-4 expressing leukocytes with their ligands in the extracellular matrix and on parenchymal cells, thereby inhibiting further recruitment and inflammatory activity of activated immune cells. In summary, Tysabri may address the inflammation characteristic of MS by blocking the molecular interaction of alpha-4 beta-1 integrin expressed by inflammatory cells with VCAM1 on vascular endothelial cells and with CS1 and or osteopontin expressed by parenchymal cells in the brain. Indication. Tysabri natalizumab is indicated as monotherapy for the treatment of patients with relapsing forms of multiple sclerosis. Tysabri increases the risk of PML. When initiating and continuing treatment with Tysabri, physicians should consider whether the expected benefit of Tysabri is sufficient to offset this risk. See important safety information regarding the risk of PML with Tysabri. Important safety information. Warning. Progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, PML. Tysabri natalizumab increases the risk of PML, an opportunistic viral infection of the brain that usually leads to death or severe disability. Risk factors for the development of PML include duration of therapy, prior use of immunosuppressants, and presence of anti-JCV antibodies. These factors should be considered in the context of expected benefit when initiating and continuing treatment with Tysabri. Healthcare professionals should monitor patients on Tysabri for any new sign or symptom that may be suggestive of PML. Tysabri dosing should be withheld immediately at the first sign or symptom suggestive of PML. For diagnosis, an evaluation including a gadolinium-enhanced MRI scan of the brain and, when indicated, cerebrospinal fluid analysis for JC viral DNA are recommended. Because of the risk of PML, Tysabri is available only through a restricted program under a Risk Evaluation and Mitigation Strategy, REMS, called the Touch Prescribing Program. Infection by the JC virus, JCV, is required for the development of PML. There are no known interventions that can reliably prevent PML or that can adequately treat PML if it occurs. Post-marketing data suggests that the risk of developing PML may be associated with relative levels of serum anti-JCV antibody compared to a calibrator as measured by ELISA, often described as an anti-JCV antibody index value. MRI findings may be apparent before clinical signs or symptoms suggestive of PML. Monitoring with MRI for signs that may be consistent with PML may be useful. 
and any suspicious findings should lead to further investigation to allow for an early diagnosis of PML if present. Consider monitoring patients at high risk for PML more frequently. Lower PML-related mortality and morbidity have been reported following Tysabri discontinuation in patients with PML who are initially asymptomatic, compared to patients with PML who had characteristic clinical signs and symptoms at diagnosis. PML has been reported after discontinuation of Tysabri in patients who did not have findings suggestive of PML at the time of discontinuation. Patients should continue to be monitored for any new signs or symptoms that may be suggestive of PML for approximately six months after discontinuation of Tysabri. Adverse events that may occur during plasma exchange include clearance of other medications and volume shifts, which have the potential to lead to hypotension or pulmonary edema. Although plasma exchange has not been studied in Tysabri-treated patients with PML, it has been used in such patients in the post-marketing setting to remove Tysabri more quickly from the circulation. JCV infection of granule cell neurons in the cerebellum, that is, JCV granule cell neuronopathy, GCN, with symptoms similar to PML, has been reported in patients treated with Tysabri. JCV GCN can occur with or without concomitant PML and can cause cerebellar dysfunction. Diagnosis and management of JCV-GCN should follow guidance provided for PML. Immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome, IRIS, has been reported in the majority of Tysabri-treated patients who developed PML and subsequently discontinued Tysabri. In almost all cases, IRIS occurred after plasma exchange was used to eliminate circulating Tysabri. It presents as a clinical decline in the patient's condition after Tysabri removal and, in some cases, after apparent clinical improvement that may be rapid, can lead to serious neurological complications or death, and is often associated with characteristic changes in the MRI. Tysabri has not been associated with iris in patients discontinuing treatment with Tysabri for reasons unrelated to PML. In Tysabri-treated patients with PML, Iris has been reported within days to several weeks after plasma exchange. Monitoring for development of iris and appropriate treatment of the associated inflammation should be undertaken. Contraindications. Tysabri is contraindicated in patients who have or have had PML. Tysabri is contraindicated in patients who have had a hypersensitivity reaction to Tysabri. Tysabri Touch Prescribing Program. Because of the risk of PML, Tysabri is available only through a restricted distribution program under a REMS called the Touch Prescribing Program. Patients must be enrolled in the Touch Prescribing Program, read the medication guide, understand the risks associated with Tysabri, and complete and sign the patient prescriber enrollment form. Herpes infections, encephalitis, meningitis, and acute retinal necrosis. Tysabri increases the risk of developing encephalitis and meningitis caused by herpes simplex and varicella zoster viruses. Serious, life-threatening, and sometimes fatal cases have been reported in the post-marketing setting in multiple sclerosis patients receiving Tysabri. The duration of treatment with Tysabri prior to onset ranged from a few months to several years. Monitor patients receiving Tysabri for signs and symptoms of meningitis and encephalitis. If herpes encephalitis or meningitis occurs, Tysabri should be discontinued, and appropriate treatment for herpes encephalitis meningitis should be administered. Patients being administered Tysabri are at a higher risk of acute retinal necrosis, ARN, a fulminant viral infection of the retina caused by the family of herpes viruses. Patients with eye symptoms such as decreased visual acuity, redness, or eye pain should be referred for retinal screening as serious cases of ARN can lead to blindness of one or both eyes. Following clinical diagnosis of ARN, consider discontinuation of Tysabri. Hepatotoxicity. Clinically significant liver injury, including acute liver failure requiring transplant, has been reported in patients treated with Tysabri in the post-marketing setting. Signs of liver injury, including markedly elevated serum hepatic enzymes and elevated total bilirubin, occurred as early as six days after the first dose. Signs of liver injury have also been reported for the first time after multiple doses. Tysabri should be discontinued in patients with jaundice or other evidence of significant liver injury, for example, laboratory evidence.
Hypersensitivity Antibody Formation Hypersensitivity reactions have occurred in patients receiving Tysabri, including serious systemic reactions, for example, anaphylaxis, which occurred at an incidence of less than 1%. Reactions usually occur within two hours of the start of the infusion. Symptoms associated with these reactions can include urticaria, dizziness, fever, rash, rigors, pruritus, nausea, flushing, hypotension, dyspnea, and chest pain. If a hypersensitivity reaction occurs, discontinue administration of Tysabri and initiate appropriate therapy. Patients who experience a hypersensitivity reaction should not be retreated with Tysabri. Hypersensitivity reactions were more frequent in patients with antibodies to Tysabri compared with patients who did not develop antibodies to Tysabri in both MS and CD studies. Patients who receive Tysabri for a short exposure, one to two infusions, followed by an extended period without treatment, are at higher risk of developing anti-natalizumab antibodies and or hypersensitivity reactions on re-exposure compared to patients who received regularly scheduled treatment. Immunosuppression infections. The immune system effects of Tysabri may increase the risk for infections. In study MS1, certain types of infections, including pneumonias and urinary tract infections, including serious cases, gastroenteritis, vaginal infections, tooth infections, tonsillitis, and herpes infections, occurred more often in Tysabri-treated patients than in placebo-treated patients. One opportunistic infection, a cryptosporidial gastroenteritis with a prolonged course, was observed in a patient who received Tysabri in study MS1. In studies MS1 and MS2, an increase in infections was seen in patients concurrently receiving short courses of corticosteroids. However, the increase in infections in Tysabri-treated patients who received steroids was similar to the increase in placebo-treated patients who received steroids. In a long-term safety study of patients, opportunistic infections, pulmonary mycobacterium avium intracellulare, aspergilloma, cryptococcal fungemia and meningitis, and candida pneumonia have been observed in less than 1% of Tysabri-treated patients. Concurrent use of antineoplastic, immunosuppressant, or immunomodulating agents may further increase the risk of infections over the risk observed with use of Tysabri alone. In studies MS1 and MS2, the rate of any type of infection was approximately 1.5 per patient year in both Tysabri-treated patients and placebo-treated patients. In study MS1, the incidence of serious infections was approximately 3% in Tysabri-treated patients and in placebo-treated patients. Most patients did not interrupt treatment with Tysabri during infections. Laboratory Test Abnormalities In clinical trials, Tysabri was observed to induce increases in circulating lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, basophils, and nucleated red blood cells. Observed changes persisted during Tysabri exposure, but were reversible, returning to baseline levels usually within 16 weeks after the last dose. Elevations of neutrophils were not observed. Tysabri induces mild decreases in hemoglobin levels, mean decrease of 0.6 grams per deciliter, that are frequently transient. Adverse reactions. The most common adverse reactions reported at an incidence of greater than or equal to 10% with Tysabri and greater than or equal to 2% difference with placebo were headache, 38% versus 33%, fatigue, 27% versus 21%, infusion reactions, 24% versus 18%, urinary tract infections, 21% versus 17%, arthralgia, 19% versus 14%. Depression, 19% versus 16%. Pain in extremity, 16% versus 14%. Rash, 12% versus 9%. Gastroenteritis, 11% versus 9%. And vaginitis, 10% versus 6%. The most frequently reported serious adverse reactions in study MS1 were infections, 3.2% versus 2.6% placebo, including urinary tract infection, 0.8% versus 0.3%, and pneumonia, 0.6% versus 0%, acute hypersensitivity reactions, 
1.1% versus 0.3%, including anaphylaxis, anaphylactoid reaction, 0.8% versus 0%, depression, 1.0% versus 1.0%, including suicidal ideation or attempt, 0.6% versus 0.3%, and cholelithiasis, 1.0% versus 0.3%. Based on animal data, tisabri may cause fetal harm. Tisabri should be used during pregnancy only if the potential benefit justifies the potential risk to the fetus. For additional important safety information, please see full prescribing information, including boxed warning, via the link provided.